Hi, everybody. This is Scott Baradell from Idea Growth and Trust Signals. And today I want to talk a little history. And for those of you who had been bad memories of history, I'm going to try not to bring back that high school trauma. I'm actually a history buff. I believe the, the statement made by the author, Michael Crichton, who said, if you don't know history, then you don't know anything. You're like a leaf that doesn't know it's part of a tree. And I think that's true, that we all need and gain a better understanding of ourselves and where we fit in the world when we understand that context and that kind of historical context. I think in PR, many uh, of us uh, find ourselves in a role where, what are we doing? Is it What is PR? Is it media relations? It's something more now, but what? And what's PR and what's marketing? We talked about this in um, the last video we did. But um, sometimes a way to kind of get at the reasons uh, why you are how you are uh, and why you do what you do is to kind of look at how we got here. And I thought that might be helpful. And then I thought it might also provide some insight on where we want to go from here. So let's go back to the beginning in the early days of PR. Edward Bernays and Ivy Lee were known as the founding fathers of PR in the early 20th century. They have probably, if you've taken communications in college, you've probably heard these names, but you might not know a lot about them or the fact that they really had different visions for PR and the industry ultimately kind of chose one over the other. So kind of let's look at that and, and what happened and why. So to go back to the beginning, uh, Edward Bernays and Ivy Lee emerged in at a time when uh, there was a lot of change going on in the country. Uh, there were a lot of big companies, industrialization, uh, not a lot of uh, regulation or uh, checks on kind of the growth and power of these big companies. You might have heard the term robber, bar robber barons and big oil, big railroad companies and so forth. Well, um, child labor was an issue. Uh, they didn't have 40 hour work week laws. Uh, a lot of things that were uh, led to a, a movement to reform uh, corporations and this included the antitrust legislation to break up big companies. So suddenly for the first time, something that didn't happen in the late 19th century happened in the beginning of the 20th century is corporations realized they had to think about what people thought of them. You know, railroads, for example, what railroads used to do is when there'd be a crash, like a fatal crash where a bunch of people died, not only would they not let's say put out a press release or, or, inform um, the, the public, they would deny it happened. They would deny that the crash ever occurred. We, fatal crash, we don't know what you're talking about. That's literally how it used to be. And this was part of the reason why, you know, people said, let's just break up these big companies. They don't care about people, that kind of thing. So there was a need for an intermediary to help have create a better communication and dialogue between corporate America and, and people through the media. Um, this led to the creation of the public relations business. Ivy Lee had been a journalist and he saw an opportunity to be that conduit. Um, he um, counseled his clients to be a straight dealer, provide information. Um, if you're doing things wrong, Let's fix them. Let's not just deny it's happening. Um, this was really set the tone for a lot of great things about um, the PR profession at, at its best. And I think one of the documents that he created is thought of as kind of a founding document of the profession. It was his declaration of principles. When he started representing a big railroad, he sent out to the press this document, his declaration of principles, explaining what his role was as a PR counselor at a time when this was just emerging as a profession. And part of what he said was, we aim to supply news. This is not an advertising agency. 
Further details on any subject treated will be supplied promptly and any editor will be assisted most carefully in verifying directly any statement of fact. So for example, the first time after he was brought in when a railroad had a fatal crash, he convinced the railroad to allow him to bring the reporters to the scene to provide them full details about what happened, transparency that had never existed before. He deserves a lot of credit for that, and that was his big uh, uh, contribution to the profession. It also led to something we still have today, which is this idea that the primary role of public relations is to be that partner to the media. This idea that there's these big media outlets that control public opinion. And if the PR profession can just kind of form good relationships of trust with those media outlets, then they, they take it from there kind of thing. So they the made PR about the relationship between PR professionals and media professionals, as opposed to a direct relationship with the public or consumer. Edward Bernays had a little different idea for what PR should be. Um, Edward Bernays, in one of his famous works, uh, wrote, modern business must have its finger continuously on the public pulse. The voice of the people expresses the mind of the people, composed of inherited prejudices and symbols and cliches and verbal form formulas. He thought people were fascinating, and he thought that PR should be all about understanding what made consumers, what made people tick in terms of their decision making. It's probably wouldn't come as a surprise then that Edward Bernays' uncle was Sigmund Freud, who was the, the founder of psychoanalysis. Uh, Edward Bernays, like his uncle, thought about people's inner lives and how they thought and what their motivations were. And so when he thought of PR, he wasn't thinking, oh, this is about glad handing the press and, and making friends with them and making them trust you. He thought this is about understanding people and understanding consumers and understanding how to uh, best shape um, uh, my message uh, for uh, this audience and how to best get that message to them. Um, this is a, a broader uh, objective, right? And if you think about today, compared to then, um, we have a very fragmented information landscape today. You can't just uh, do what me, PR did then and still does to too much of an extent today and just kind of anchor your value to the news media because there's this whole continuum of influence that influences consumers today from an online review to a wide range of paid and unpaid influencers to, to all types of media. Uh, this group of media that only certain people trust and this group of media that other people trust. It's not like back in the old days when it was about, um, yeah, if you just, if Uncle, if Uncle Walty, if Walter Cronkite said something that everybody believed it, we don't have that today. So somebody has to cobble together for brands. What is this continuum of different sources of information and influence and trust that you're going to have to reach in order to build trust with your customers. Because it's not enough to just pick some mainstream media sources and say, we're gonna schmooze with these reporters and they're gonna write about it and then our work is done. It's not like that. You have to take a step back and think about, not it's not about the media coverage, it's about the objective of media coverage. The objective of media coverage is achieving third-party validation to establish trust. And what Edward Bernays would do, I think if he were alive today, would be thinking about that, that question, um, that larger question. Edward Bernays also had goals like making PR a true profession, like medicine or law or accounting, where you had um, years of study and accreditation and, and so forth. Those things are probably not going to happen at this point. There is an accreditation in public relations that the PRSA um, has. I've had that one for 20 years. A lot of people have it, but most people don't even know what it is. It's called an APR. But that's a small step toward this much 
larger goal. We may never get there, but the things we can do is as PR professionals, we can start thinking about um, how we can contribute to the larger question of establishing trust between our clients and their customers. And that starts by looking at the customers and where they're coming from and what's important to them and the sources of information that are important to them today, as opposed to starting from, oh, these are all my media contacts. That's all I need. They'll take it from there. So start with the customer, start with the consumer. And the media needs to be part of that picture, but a much smaller part than it was in those days when Ivy Lee came out with this declaration of principles. Founding document of PR doesn't reflect where PR needs to be today. So that's all I have today. I really appreciate you uh, taking the time for this history lesson. Hopefully it wasn't too boring. Um, I think it's fun. So hopefully you've got, you've got some value out of it too. Thanks for taking the time.